This is the Panasonic Lumix S5. This is the first generation S5 from Panasonic. It's one of their earlier full frame cameras. This camera came out in September of 2020, making it just about three years old at this point. Even with this body starting to show its age, I believe it's an incredible value when it comes to stills photography, and it's really good for video, with one slight caveat we'll get into. In Panasonic's eyes, the S5 has already been replaced by the S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X, both of which are highly capable cameras, great autofocus, good image quality, all around really good performing cameras, but that doesn't mean this little guy is not without its merit. This camera boasts a 24 megapixel sensor with an impressive 14 and a half stops of dynamic range or just shy of 14 and a half. Uh, the actual number sits at 14.45 stops, which is pretty good considering the price tag of this camera. The sensor handles low light conditions really well. I get clean images into 3200 and then everything beyond that is fairly usable, especially for video. It's just pretty clean all the way up through the range. Once you start getting past 6400, you can start to kind of pixel peep some noise. But overall, it's a pretty clean image out of this little guy. The camera body is weather sealed, uh, pretty much what you'd expect from Panasonic. It's it is a magnesium alloy internal frame with a plastic outer body. On one side of the camera, you have all your standard input and output jacks. So you've got your microphone input, headphone output, a micro HDMI cable, as well as a USB Type-C connection. The Mark 1 does come with a battery charger, so you don't have to charge it via the USB Type-C, even though you still can if you want to. The top of the camera features two dials, one that allows you to change your shooting mode, so you can go between manual, aperture priority, program auto, and the custom functions really easy. Uh, then you've got another dial over here on this side. This allows you to jump between continuous time-lapse, s and single shooting, things like that. This camera is compatible with the full line of L-mount lens from Sigma and Panasonic as well as a few from Leica if your pockets are deep enough for it. The images coming out of the S5 Mark I are sharp, contrasty, and overall look pretty good right out of the camera. I do love the built-in picture profiles, uh, as well as the Let View Assist feature if you're shooting video on this. It will use Panasonic's Vlog profile and video if you want to go that route, and you can simply set up uh, any number of these buttons to actually use for your vlog assist which overlays a rough rec 709 preview over your vlog just makes it easier to see easier to focus um just overall makes the image a little easier to work with when it's on your camera. This is just an overview feature. It doesn't actually bake in that Rec. 709 preview, but allows you to see more like what your footage is going to turn out once you do a uh, color space transform and resolve or apply any kind of conversion lit. I've got mine mapped right here to what is the delete key when you're in playback mode. Just makes it really easy when I'm filming just to reach down, click that button, turn on my view assist. For those of you guys who are unaware of what Vlog is, it's a super flat profile that's in the camera it basically sucks all the contrast and saturation out of the image allowing you to get the most dynamic range possible out of the sensor now as much as i love this camera there is one downside that i think you should be aware of before you look into it so the s5 does produce great images it's compatible with a good range of lenses um, battery life's okay but the autofocus is the big stopping point for this camera. This was addressed with the S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X, but on the standard S5 Mark I, the only autofocus system is a sensor-based contrast detection system, which is not terrible, but it's not great by any means. Uh, for video, you can basically forget about using the autofocus. It's fairly slow, not super accurate. For photo, I found it very usable. Not for fast paced situations though. I've shot a few uh, parts of a wedding on this original S5 and it was okay, but it did hunt a little bit in the darker areas. Even though the images turned out good, the autofocus was just not quite up to the task. Um, I've shot Sony as well for a few years, and this was nowhere near my a7 III or my a7 IV as far as autofocus performance. So if you need good AF for fast moving subjects, I would seriously suggest you look into the S5 Mark II or the S5 Mark II X if you're doing a heavy amount of video. Overall, the Lumix S5 Mark I is a great camera. This is actually my second one. To give you an idea, I dropped this body last week and I'm gonna be sending it out for repair due to the fact I damaged the in-body image stabilization. But in the meantime, I bought a brand new uh, Lumix S5 Mark I. The reason I'm able to do that is because right now this body retails cheaper than Sony's newest APS-C body. 
You can find this camera for around $1,300, body only, brand new, and it takes incredible photos for that price. So guys, if you're in the market for your first full frame camera and crazy autofocus performance is not necessarily a requirement, this is a great body to pick up. I carry an S5 as my EDC camera and while it may be a little big for an EDC body, I love the image quality that comes out of it and it's very hard for me to see any difference between my S5 Mark II and my S5 Mark I in terms of image quality. The autofocus is really the only pressing issue with this body. So like I said, if it's not a factor and you're not shooting fast moving things or you can use manual focus for your video projects, it's a great body retailing at only about $1,300 right now.